missed. We wanted to read uh, from Ada how, uh, the Book of Wisdom, but here, this is one I've never recorded, but the author has an amazing analysis. Um, Victor Danner. Uh, taking uh, advanced Sufism, we're talking here that there is no such thing as Sufism and Islam. There's only Sufism in Islam. We're talking about this path, and uh, but anyways, he in the book of he his he describes the Iba Adawa and the Kitab al Hakim. It's, to, it's called the core essence of Sufism. But then on the other hand, here, when he talks about the Taraqwa, the spiritual path, he's saying that if anyone in the West understood by mysticism such teachings and practices as found in the Greek fathers of the church and the Hesychius and the Meister Eckhart of the medieval Catholicism and Plotinus, then Sufism is indeed mysticism, and the Sufis are mystics. So he's saying that that's the authentic part in the West, not that the others aren't in the West. Hmm. See, he says, here he says that with quite legitimate gnosis of the Greek fathers and the later Hesychius, the Sufism is Tasawuf in Arabic. Yeah. Um, well, here's the other thing here. He's saying, okay, when they went in favor of Aristotelianism, Aquinas and contemporary, Thomas Aquinas is a contemporary of Sheikh Ibad Ada Allah. Hmm. Hmm. It says that Christian Aristotelianism led eventually step by step to the negation of the Gnostic message embedded in the Christian religion. Hmm. Quite a statement. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by the The mystical part of it was washed out. Because of Aristotle? Yeah, Aristotle is. Read it again? To the Platonism. Read it again. I can't read it again. You have to listen. That's, so that's a good part of it. And, uh, uh, mm, that's just an introduction. To what? I did read it already. This, this is talking about this book. i read a sample of it. Actually, the whole book is worth quite <laughs> advanced. Mm -hmm. I'm reading chapter 21. He talks about Plato and he doesn't talk about Pythagoras. Pythagoras is more mystical. When two, Plato. yeah, but Plato is just Pythagoras. So Plato, Plato is the main guy. So Neoplatonism kind of fits. When two matters, chapter 21, when two matters seem confusing to you, <clears throat> see which is heavier on the ego and follow it through. For truly nothing weighs on the ego but that which is true. Hmm. Heavier on the ego, my goodness. The one you can take in a way. When you can't take a sign of compliance with compassion is haste and super supererogatory deeds and sluggishness is in fulfilling obligatory deeds. Hmm. Supererogatory deeds. Hmm. Six. No, we didn't do analysis. We're doing it on the fly. Okay, one hundred six. They they do have an explanation here. Twenty one. Hmm. 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 Hmm
unfortunately, it takes time. Hmm. The obligatory deeds are those that weigh on the ego. Hmm. Hmm. He laid down specific times for acts of obedience so that procrastination not divert you from them. And he made each time span ample so that you would have a share in making the choice. The man, God gave you ample time for meditation. The five daily ritual prayers fall within specific times, as was said previously. Each prayer has a time span that permits the pious to choose within it their own moment of performing the prayer. He's saying, God gave you time to pray. <laughs> God did? Hmm, probably did. Hmm. He knew of the irresolution of servants in dealing with him, so he made obedience to him obligatory for them. He drove them to obedience with the chains of obligation. His, your Lord is amazed at people who are driven to paradise with chains. Well, wow, these are such a... These are such uh, intriguing statements, you know. It takes a lot of analysis. So. I don't analyze that. Mm. Mm. He made this service of him obligatory I don't like to. You don't like him? Yeah? <laughs> she doesn't like it and she pronounced him as not wise enough. Uh -huh. Uh, this book is good, actually. Uh, I'm afraid that he's good, actually. Which one is he? Hmm. Hmm. The fact of the matter is he's good. <laughs>